Hey everybody, this is Arnold Rauers and today I'm going to show you the newest, latest version of uh, Card Crawl Adventure for desktop. Um, we've been super busy in the last month uh, to update and improve uh, the desktop experience. Mostly uh, we got a lot of stuff done uh, in regards to uh, usability, tool tips, uh, we got a lot of stuff done um, to, on to get the onboarding easier and um, today I'm just going to show you off the uh, new stuff that we've been working on and then um, I'm maybe going through a uh, run with the scoundrel. Uh, the scoundrel is the first starting character which is also available in the demo that you can get right now. Um, maybe I um, explain a little bit of the mechanics uh, on the rogue and scoundrel and how he uh, plays. And yeah, I think we can just mostly uh, talk a bit about the gameplay and um, I'm just going to show you how to play and um, what kind of um, gameplay the game actually has to offer. Okay, so um, we jumped over. This is the main menu. <coughs> This is the nice uh, view of the city uh, and in the middle here is the uh, cut crawl tavern where you start your adventure. And then in the main menu you can already see we have this nice scrolling menu here um, where you can see all the characters that you can play. Um, in the demo itself we can only play the first character uh, which I'm going to show you in a minute. I uh, just wanted to show you off a few of the features that we also have. Um, uh, mostly we do also have a uh, weekly tavern crawl, um, which is an ongoing event that is uh, running through the week where a lot of players compete on a given adventure and in the end of the week um, you can s compare scores directly uh, with the other users. Uh, this week's character is the Blood Cultist. Uh, we've got a library uh, where you can look through all the cards. We have a lot of uh, specific cards uh, of each category. Uh, for example, we could just uh, go through the attack cards real quick here. You can see that there's a lot of uh, stuff here that does different things. We have spells, we have items, we have normal attack cards. Uh, a few we didn't even have uh, discovered here in my version. Uh, maybe some of you recognize some of the imagery of the cards. Um, Treasures. Uh, we got unique monsters uh, which appear in each tavern, and yeah, got a bunch of bunch of interesting uh, cards in the game here. And you can also see the equipment. Uh, each character has starting equipment, and then character specific equipment which you can unlock through playing various tasks, as you can see here. Those characters don't have their, or don't have their um, stuff unlocked yet. We have a bunch of general equipment that helps you through a run, and then there's also charms, which are more luck-based, uh, with percentage chance of uh, activating. And then there's a bunch of cursed equipment, which belongs to a different game mode, the cursed game mode, which is basically a hard mode of the game. Right, um, and as I said. Um, each character has its own uh, starting equipment. As you can hear, this, see the scoundrel, uh, which you also can play in the demo as well, um, is the uh, first character who basically uh, revolves around the bleed mechanic. Bleed is a mechanic that um, deals one damage at the end of the turn if the monster or the enemy uh, stays on the board, but uh, obstacle cards who are not humanoid basically can't, can't get bleed. Um, each character as well uh, starts with these three like starting cards. We have an attack card, we have a uh, card that deals bleed to selected monsters and we have a healing or like uh, an, um, strength, uh, strength replenish card which gives us strength for each uh, defeated monster that had bleed. Um, and when you continue here you can see equipment which is basically what I've I showed you before in the library, uh, each equipment is basically uh, an additional interaction between the game and you. So for example, um, we have for the uh, scoundrel, we have the garret, which deals extra damage to monsters with bleed. We have a defensive item, blood bandage, where you gain three health when a monster dies of bleed. 
Uh, and we got a, uh, yeah, we call this utility helper item class that uh, Cursed Necklace, which deals Curse, which is a specific um, status effect that makes uh, your only cards easier to use and uh, enemy cards, uh, uh, your, your own cards, sorry, your own cards harder to use and the enemy cards uh, easier to use. So this basically helps with the uh, strengths strengths uh, management. Um, but I think for this run we just uh, use the Garrett, which is straightforward one damage. And then we have this um, built-in um, easy mode, you can say, uh, where if you call it, um, wear the talisman of the goddess, you gain extra health and strength uh, each turn, uh, each round, sorry, and um, each time you are defeated, uh, this is reset and then uh, you can start with the regular uh, 7 and 7 starting values. Um, so we don't use that for now. And we just jump into a game very quick. You can already see the first boss sitting there. <coughs> so um, the first tavern is always the starting tavern, it's uh, Drinking Ox. And the first starting tavern also doesn't have any house rules. Um, but we have a boss, which is Herney. Um, and, uh, he basically gets more health when we don't select him. He has a keyword called Rest, uh, and this keyword triggers uh, when the card is not selected at the end of the turn. So if he stays on board, he gets stronger, so we, we might uh, need to attack him quick and always select him in the turn so he doesn't get uh, stronger. Uh, you also have a quest in each game. Uh, this one is the um, select all cards in one turn quest, and as you can see, you get rewards um, for basically completing a quest or killing or defeating the boss. Um, yeah, the game mode is um, built up in this 3x3 three three grid. Monster cards or dungeon cards and your own deck basically gets shuffled together and is drawn from the draw pile on the left here. Um, we can uh, basically look at our equipment here with the um, backpack icon. And you can see that our starting equipment is a dagger, a short sword, a healing item, and then our three character cards. And then additionally we have the first uh, character item, Hidden Blade, here and the Garrett which we selected here. So this is basically our inventory which is also visible here on the right side. You can hover over these to see what they do. And then up here we do have the tavern menu. Uh, we can just uh, look what the tavern boss does and uh, what the quest was and for later taverns also what the house rule is for each tavern. And the smaller, uh, darker icons here, you can see I haven't done the uh, monster, uh, the, sorry, the boss and the quest. It's not yet done, so once I've done that I can see that, that I'm finished with this. So in gameplay itself revolves around selecting cards in a path. So it's a, it's a pathing mechanic where each time I select a card, gets basically added to the path and as you can see once I select uh, damage cards that each monster in the next uh, step basically would get damaged. <coughs> you can see here that um, this monster gets three damage and this monster gets three damage by the visual display up here. And that's because this card does deal a damage, this card does deal a damage and also this card does deal uh, bleed to the next monster and because we have this um, Garrett item uh, we deal one extra damage to monsters with bleed meaning I get for the first uh, monster that I attack here three damage which instantly kills the monster but as you also can see here revenge is a keyword that is triggered when the card is damaged and this card deals curse to a to a card basically so once I attack this it goes up here and curses my um, my water which from which I gain strength and it gains one strength cost basically so you can see on the top left each card has a strength cost and the strength cost I have to pay in strength I have seven strengths and it's very important because once strength runs out I'm actually forced to use my health instead of strength so meaning you can select cards even though you don't have strengths but each time I select a card for example this card here the key fragment with two strengths I would get damaged for two so you always have to keep an eye on your strengths as well as your health. Obviously, yeah, when you run out of health, the game's over. Okay, so and then each turn, obviously, I'm trying to optimize my path. Um, and once I'm happy with my path, I can tap and hold to, so, to confirm it. Uh, this card gets discarded and then draws a new monster. 
and adds it to the deck. This guy um, chucked this card below. Uh, awake means uh, in, when the turn starts. So this with with this awake keyword, if this card stays on the board, it shocks all the time. So we also have to take care this card should be discarded or defeated this turn so it doesn't shock another card next turn. But obviously it deals shock to one card, which means any card. And in this case, it's pretty good because it shocked this monster and shock means a uh, card with shock has its uh, ability disabled for this turn so this guy cannot do anything right now so we could easily defeat him here so let's see we can go around here this guy uh, has another status effect called freeze and freeze means that a card even if it's selected cannot be discarded this turn which can be good for my stuff so i can have multiple uses of my water card up here but could be bad for monsters uh, that obviously have abilities that, that trigger on turn end so so you cannot get rid of them for the turn uh, this card deals bleed to all selected and i'm just leaving this here because i um, cannot really do anything here right now so we can just leave him here and then you see these little tooths popping up here so for each defeated monster you get a tooth and once you collected enough teeth, you can go over here and look uh, above me. Basically, look at the um, boss counter, which says two of three. So, meaning if I collected three twos, defeated three enemies, the boss will actually join the join the um, fight. And um, a shuffle, meaning the whole game consisting of three uh, runs, and each shuffle um, basically has has an, a beginning and an end. And at the end of each shuffle. Um, once all cards are uh, moved to the discard from the draw pile, you get this bonfire win where you can like get a permanent, uh, a temporary upgrade basically. So you can get um, either gold, for example, in this case, or you can get these uh, bonfire cards, which are to your deck and then uh, basically are only here for this uh, tavern, but they can help you in various ways. There are different bonfire cards. For example, this one is pretty straightforward, gives you strength and health. Um, but in this case, I can also just go for gold right now because I still have a lot of health and my strength also is uh, pretty safe with my water up here. Uh, one other thing that you can do in a run is uh, open the treasure. On the bottom left you can see uh, the treasure. And he needs to be unlocked to be looted. Uh, and to unlock this treasure I actually have to assemble the key first. So meaning I need to connect and connect basically both of the keys. And you can see that they both have the shiny golden border now. So if I if I was to confirm this turn now, I'm going to um, assemble the key. And the key gets uh, shuffled into the into the draw deck. And then once the key is drawn, you can collect the key with the chest and open the chest. But in this case, as you can maybe see, as a good example here, I have this strength uh, value of one. And if I start to select those. I get damaged for well, a total of three damage because I don't have enough strength to actually pick those cards up. And that's where this comes in. You basically gain strength here. Then I can collect those. And um, this card here has an endure keyword, with, which means it triggers at the end of the turn. So at the end of the turn, this deals one damage to me. I don't have attack cards right now here, so I cannot deal with it uh, in terms of damaging it, but I can still. Uh, basically select it and then just discard it for this turn so I don't have to worry about this guy hitting me all the time. So here's the key which gets uh, shuffled in and now I can play another turn. I can maybe... this, this guy would deal one damage to me but because I defeat him before he actually can deal damage when I select him. He's uh, not hitting me here. So you can see I'm losing a bit of uh, health by selecting those cards because I'm running out of strength again. So I can replenish some strength with my leech card here. I'll do this. So now enough uh, monsters have died and the boss can join the game. And now 
<clears throat> basically the focus of the game shifts to the boss. So the boss stays on the board, you cannot discard him. Uh, now you want to basically hit the boss as often as possible with your attack cards uh, before the game ends so to, to defeat him. Um, this case, this guy shocked actually my card, so I cannot deal any damage this turn. Uh, but we could just select the boss here and open the treasure. Also, uh, bleed again deals one damage at the end of the turn, meaning cards that stay on the board will again gain one damage. So these both are basically already dead, so I don't even have to care about them right now. So we can see that. I can open the treasure here first. And uh, each treasure has a treasure reward card. There are different treasure reward cards that you can choose from. A uh, few are more complicated, few are pretty straightforward. Some uh, have some downsides. This one that deals 5 damage to you but gives you 5 gold. Uh, this one is pretty beneficial because it has 3 damage, which is pretty good in the first tavern where our cards are not that strong. And this one increases uh, strength of adjacent cards when it gets drawn. So this can be pretty pretty bad when it when it increases strength of uh, your cards. But let's go with the uh, golden dagger for now because we actually need to have some damage for the boss here. Okay, so let's see. Um, uh, yeah, another special card is the deck merchant, uh, which. Uh, comes in every tavern to actually help you and he will add one or you will be able to add one deck to your card when you select him. Um, so let's see, we could we could drink first, we can combine all our attack cards to a really powerful 7 attack and bleed the guy, bleed Herney, of course. So meaning he will die this turn and I can even go here and use the deck merchant as well on this turn. So now you will see that at the end of the turn, after we drafted uh, the card, he will, he will die. So, um, yeah, you can uh, pick one of three each, uh, each time you visit the deck merchant. Uh, this card in the middle is good for our synergies, but we actually will have a card later on that does something pretty similar. This is a spell. And there are a few cards that synergize with spells. Uh, obviously lightning damage is like a elementary damage type, but it does uh, 1 to 3, meaning lightning damage is always like a random random effect. Uh, we could also use more damage, plain damage, but this card costs 1. So actually for the sake of this uh, the showcase I would go with this. What we can uh, draft later on in terms of uh, Damage cards. So the boss uh, not happy that we've defeated him. Uh, the barkeeper Neom now takes over, and we've uh, done a, the second shuffle. There's another uh, bonfire event. You can be greedy, I think, in the first tavern. Just go for more gold. That's always good. And now we can basically try to defeat the rest of the, of the monsters and basically look for the exit because the exit of the tavern spawns always in the third shuffle we're still in the second um, here's our new card and I see how this works this does a lot of nice lightning damage here Put the extra the extra uh, from the uh, from the item. So this is a really good turn. We defeated all the monsters here. So this is the end of the second shuffle. Uh, we could go for health replenish here, and then the last shuffle basically begins. We have one thing that we haven't done actually. When you look up here again, uh, we haven't done the tavern quest and. To know what the tavern quest was, we can look here and it is uh, select all cards in one turn. So let's go ahead and just do this. So now all monsters are bleeding. One, two, three, four, five, and I'm getting back five strengths from them. But uh, this guy here burned our uh, our leech card and burn the burn tech basically means that it deals one fire damage to it our character when the card is selected, so that's why we're getting uh, getting burned here from the card. But anyways, we're getting back 5 strength, which is good. Then we 
uh, completed the quests by selecting all cards, which will give us one extra gold. And the barkeeper already spawned here is the uh, second to last card, so the last card is always the exit, and he basically uh, wants you to pay. So um, there was a lot of confusion uh, in, in, a, in a other run-throughs that I watched, um, where people were actually asking, is this guy like necessary to, co to collect or necessary to, to select? No, he's not necessary to select, but if you don't select him, he rests, so he's not selected, and he increases his damage. So meaning this guy gets stronger and stronger and stronger the longer you stay and the longer you don't uh, basically leave the tavern. So um, this is an option to to avoid that increase in damage, but it obviously will remove your your strength. Um, sorry, your, your gold. So yeah, you have to be careful with the with the barkeeper. Once he spawned, uh, he can get pretty annoying if you haven't, for example, completed the quest or killed the boss and you want to stick around a bit longer. You always have to be on the lookout for the barkeeper. And there are different barkeepers basically that gets that get harder and harder through through the run. So nothing left for me to do. I'm just selecting my strength here and getting to the exit. You have to select the exit last, the last keyword. Finish the run. Uh, you get an overview here. You have defeated the boss. Treasure collected. Uh, treasure comp uh, Sorry, treasure collected and quest completed. And then uh, each time you finish a tavern, you can get a tavern reward, um, getting a new item, a new charm, or improving character cards. And for this run, uh, as I said, I wanted to improve cards here because I know they're pretty strong with the um, with the scoundrel. And then we have merchant rewards, which actually um, are kind of similar to the tavern rewards, but have a few. Uh, specific actions as well. For example, you can remove strengths of a card. Uh, you can add a new item here, and this one is that is a, you remove a card from your deck and then you uh, draft a new one, basically. Um, in this case, I'm going to spend some gold to get a new item, and we can choose from three items. Uh, each item does a specific thing, and it always does it. So that's the difference to the charms. The charms are like um, chance-based items and this item, these items are basically triggered items that, that do that thing once the condition is met or they do something right away. For example, the massive mug increases maximum health by three. Prisma um, reflects damage when I block uh, and the anvil uh, gives us five strengths if we use three or more different attack cards in a turn. Uh, Pretty passive items, I would say. I would select the massive mug for now. Extra health is always good. And uh, make our life easier. So after you finish the first tavern, you venture out in the world and you can see this nice overview of the of the world map. And you can see that uh, now we have to select two new taverns to discover them. And then afterwards we can actually select one, which one we want to uh, visit. And you can see that the, these little passes lead between the taverns and based on the last tavern you have finished you get different options to choose from. And these little icons mean uh, difficulty, so obviously three three skulls would be hard, so Lighting Gate's Rest would be a hard tavern and the rewards here are only three gold. This seems to be an easy one with four gold, so let's try this maybe, the Candle Cavern. And then we could... Um, just go over here to have some options later on and discover the tinkers then. So let's see, the Candle Cavern uh, has a house rule which says that the random card at the uh, after each reshuffle gets burned. Uh, again, burn is a bad thing basically, so it deals damage to your character. The boss is the Goblin Queen. She deals one damage and uh, similar to Herney on rest gale, gains uh, health and the quest is to deal five or more damage to a single monster in one turn. This could be hard. I don't know if we have a lot of... don't have enough uh, damage cards yet to do that. So the good thing is we could also look here. In this uh, tavern the house rule is that the character loses three strengths after each reshuffle. This is also... Uh, can be difficult or can be a dangerous when you when you end a shuffle with with low health uh, with low strength, so it, it can actually drain your your health as well. Boss is Mogor, 
He's a pretty cool uh, boss. He has guards that guard him and make him invulnerable, and then you have to defeat the guards first. Um, and we should have never less than three health throughout the tavern. I think we should just go with this one because um, <clears throat> one mechanic in the game is that bosses basically scale with the uh, tavern order they appear in. So each boss has three difficulty levels, and then the first. Two taverns, it's one, then three and four, it's two, and then the last is it's three basically, and he gets progressively harder and more difficult to defeat. So, and this guy is definitely uh, a, an enemy or a boss that is really hard to defeat in the last tavern. So, let's see, now our um, Eviscerate has strike. Strike means that it triggers instantly without selecting targets, so it instantly leads all monsters here, which is pretty good. We do have this treasure. Uh, you can tap and hold actually to get a more detailed tooltip. This treasure is the ancient altar, and um, you have to like, select this treasure first and then destroy basically one of your selected cards. Um, and in this case, I actually. I can just quickly look at our deck again. I actually would prefer to my for my dagger to be destroyed so we can uh, wait a bit to actually activate this um, we could go like this we could also go down here because this guy has no strength because it is cursed we can defeat him right away I think we leave the others here they will get damage from the lead. Um, this got cursed. Uh, sorry, this got burned as well, so that's not so good. But we can destroy this guy. This guy is also pretty nasty, though. Those guys actually increase strength of cards, so once you hit him, you can see that this card here gets increased strength. this guy as well. Right, and for Mogor the um, the, the teeth counters uh, are on five, so we have to defeat five monsters for him to spawn. Um, let's take a bonfire here maybe, gain five strength. This will be uh, shuffled in with the new cards to the draw pile again, so we can use it later. Nice, so and here's my dagger, so um, I'm actually trying to activate the altar now on the dagger. And um, we could try to use this treasure, that's the blood gold treasure, and um, it means when it stays on the board, gain one gold for each damage, basically any damage, take, and then it exhausts. So, we already have 10 health from our um, equipment, meaning we have a lot of potential to gain a lot of gold with this treasure. And then we have to see if we can damage... Oh, this is a pretty good turn. I think we can damage us a lot in this turn. So, this should damage me for 1, this for 3. This should damage me. This should heal me, and this should damage me again, so let's see. Obviously this guy will add some new cards because he has a discard ability, but I think that's not too bad. Uh, we draft a new card from the merchant real quick. More spells, healing item. I mean, why not? We can just go on with the spells. There's another lightning dodge spell. <coughs> this one strikes uh, adjacent targets. Now you can see... Wow, that we got 7 gold from the... Uh, from the treasure, which is really, really good in terms of uh, updating our cards and our uh, equipment later on. So now I actually want to gain some strength back. This guy has to be defeated because he endures. Uh, this guy has bleed and I actually don't want to select him here. He can like just bleed out basically. 
So now Mogo spawns. This was one of his guard cards. We will see that uh, in a moment. So uh, as I said, Mogo comes with these guard cards. And these guard cards basically make Mogo uh, invulnerable to physical attacks. Meaning my regular attacks won't hurt him unless the guard is uh, defeated. You can see here immune to the uh, specific element. I mean, it's physical damage for this guy. Uh, and this guy down here, the Moga Guard, deals two damage and his aura. And aura means just affects all targets on the board as long as, as the card is present. Mogo, which is the boss, is immune to uh, physical damage. So now we can. Uh, now we could use our <laughs> spells, which, which aren't on the, present on the board right now. We're pretty low on health already, so let's go around here. Maybe bleed the rest of the cards for now. Okay, so now you can see this card has strike uh, triggering adjacent cards, adjacent uh, monsters uh, gain one to three damage, and they both get three damage plus my uh, uh, my Garrett, which is pretty good. So this guy will immediately die after this turn. Maybe we can take out this guy here as well. And now you can see once the guard is defeated, Moga loses his immunity to uh, physical damage and now he's uh, not easy to defeat but still he's easier to defeat as, as when he has the immunity. So those guys also have uh, auras to make uh, immune against fire and ice. Can we kill this guy maybe? This guy and then replenish some strength here. Uh, let's uh, gain more strength. I would have loved to get to gotten a uh, direct or uh, instant refresh, but uh, yeah, it's unavailable. So let's see, uh, we can maybe strike again here to add bleed and then just select one more card and wait it out I guess. So that's the, the strength of the scoundrel is basically having bleed on a lot of enemies means you have a pretty uh, low stress, low stress uh, mechanics to just wait out for the guys to to bleed out and then they get removed and you don't even have to spend a lot of strength here. So that's the end of the tavern I think. Two more cards left so let's uh, just do this. These guys get damaged and yeah we basically just leave the tavern, I guess. Tavern quest also completed with never less than three hands throughout the whole tavern. And that's the second tavern completed. We gained a lot of gained a lot of gold in this run. Um, we are continuing to improve our character cards. So I'm going to improve this card because now it not only does um, strike bleed, but also strike damage uh, to all monsters. Which is pretty good. Um, we could maybe refresh the offer here and add another equipment item to our equipment. Uh, handsaw, damage dealt to obstacles. So obstacles are basically non-humanoid enemies. Uh, is doubled. The Frostwolf pelt which is a character item from the uh, Frost Warden, so the starting item from the Frost Warden, deals Frost to the first card you select each turn. So this makes makes for a whole different uh, mechanic. So it's it's a bit much to explain right now, but this is a super powerful item uh, to actually have a lot of board control. Or we can have the crossbow who attacks a random card, at the, a random enemy at the start of the turn. Thinking for this run, I think we would be good with the uh, crossbow because it's a fun item actually. Uh, so now, 
Uh, we've completed the second tavern here, as you can see from the trophy, and now those paths basically lead to the next taverns, right? So you can, we could either go Gnad route here, five uh, gold, three difficulty, three difficulty, three gold. Uh, if we go here, we can, could only continue over here to the Frozen Inn. Um, let's see, we could do this. I mean, going for gold is always good, since gold is also the high score in this game. Uh, Gnard Root, the house root discard, random card at the start of the turn. Uh, boss is the big bad bad. Uh, he deals damage and gains uh, health of, of the attack monsters, which is pretty powerful. So this guy is really hard to defeat unless you can block him or add block to him. Block means he cannot use his attack anymore. Or you have like a lot of uh, attack cards that basically do a lot of burst damage to get him down. And this tavern we have to um, summon the boss before the second shuffle. Uh, our other option that we selected earlier is still the tavern, uh, the kennel uh, cavern. I think we're going for this one. Not a big fan of the bed with our um, setup right now. Okay, let's see. Um, our arrow here from the crossbow hit this guy in the middle. He's already defeated. And then we can basically do a lot of damage right here. Deal 5 or more damage to a single monster in a turn, already completed in the first, first turn, very good. But this is an interesting treasure, um, also a very nice looking one, I have to say. Um, Endure means if it stays on the board uh, and you have defeated 9 adjacent monsters, it unlocks, right? So we have to basically defeat adjacent monsters for those little souls to, to get removed. I can show you what I mean with that. Um, I think we should remove a bunch of cards so our uh, Eviscerate gets more, gets more targets. So this guy removed one of the souls here and now it's 8 to um, defeat. Uh, this card is also pretty good. It removes strengths of all cards in this turn. So you can basically have a strengths cost, free cost uh, <laughs> turn, which against a few of the bosses who have a lot of strengths is pretty good. So this got um, burned. <laughs> nice, the boss already spawned for us because we defeated a lot of monsters with the, with the crossbow already. Uh, this got burned from the house rule, a random card gets burned after each reshuffle. Luckily we don't have to select it for now, I think that's fine. Our merchant is shocked for this turn. So I'm actually showing you this. It's a lot of damage to all the monsters here. Another soul off the chest. And another one, very good, very good. So I think we can go this way. Draft the next card for the, from the merchant. Oh, it's given us even more elect electricity or lightning uh, cards. But I think this one is also pretty good. This synergizes well with our, um, with our character. Uh, the arrow does Bleed to non-adjacent monsters. Let's take the arrow. There's a there's a lot of there's a lot of interesting synergy with arrows as well. We have a bunch of arrows, and then we have a bunch of um, ally cards. Uh, it also synergizes, and one of them is the archer, which um, basically makes uh, arrows strike all the cards. So this guy is bad for our uh, lightning attack because he's immune to lightning. But we could kill him with this here, and then his aura also disappears. As you can see, this guy is also immune to lightning from his aura, but once I kill him, his aura is removed. I'm kind of wasting my, my healing here, but I want to try to uh, gain more souls for the chest here. Three more souls left. Um, I could use the block card for the boss. That would be actually pretty nice. Let's use the 
block card. Block bonfire. This card got burned. Oh, nice. So you can see there's the boss, and he got shocked by this card and started to turn. But also one of my attacks. But let's do it like this. So. Maybe we can go around here and then replenish some strength. Nice. Okay, let's see. So now you can use the block. Block means that a card once is blocked, so it's a an, um, status effect. I'm just showing it to you here. Once it's blocked, it cannot attack anymore, and the status of block is only removed when the card is discarded, which is pretty cool for bosses, because bosses basically never discard, so with block you can uh, make a lot of bosses uh, easier, and it helps a lot. So in this case, you cannot attack us. We opened the chest because we uh, sacrificed two more souls. Um, Let's go for this one, it's a pretty straightforward one. Um, let's go for more strength. That's the third shuffle, uh, second self shuffle done, now it's the third shuffle. So you just basically try to continue to hit the boss as hard as you can now. Gold here. Boss is down to two health now, which is good. Pretty low on strengths right now, but we still have a few cards to replenish. It. So this guy deals frost. Yeah, but the boss is uh, defeated for now. That's very good. <clears throat> bunch of monsters here now. Let's take out this one. Maybe this one we just discard. Okay. Ah, okay, the bomb gnome, um, maybe you have seen it just exploded um, and, and added pals to all the other, all the other monsters, but um, yeah, I think we I think we would already completed the quest as well. Uh, just leave here. Don't let us uh, hit by the barkeeper because he already needs two dash. Uh, and when you're low on health at the end of the tavern, this can be really nasty. Okay, um, we could go for another charm maybe to show off the charm. So charms, as I said, are um, chance-based items. They all have a 50% chance to activate and they're obviously different ones. So for example, this one, charm of duplication, 50% chance to duplicate and permanently add a card drafted from the deck merchant. So obviously this is better early. Charm of death, 50% chance to kill a monster and lose one strength at the start of the turn. This is super, super powerful. It can kill bosses in, in one hit, but also remove strength. So the more it triggers, the more likely you are to lose strength from it. And Charm of Favor is a charm that adds uh, one attack card, utility card, or an ally after each uh, shuffle. So uh, this could be actually quite nice to show off. And then we have even more mer merchant rewards. Uh, we could duplicate a card from our deck, which is also pretty powerful. And then I would duplicate this card, which is uh, pretty, pretty strong. Okay, now we can discover another tavern. We have finished the third one. We can go up to the sea side, out to, to the frozen inn. Um, let's do this one, maybe. Uh, boss Soul Eater. Uh, the Soul Eater has an etheric keyword, which, meaning the card cannot be selected. 
And on Awake, so at the start of the turn, he discards two cards, and then on the end of the turn, he loses three health, so basically he gets weaker and weaker and weaker, but he also uh, discards card, which can make the game one pretty fast and two uh, pretty hard when he discards cards that belong to you and not the enemy cards. So this guy, and then we could look here again. Yeah, I think let's let's do the let's do this one before the the uh, the soul eater one. This is also visually a pretty nice tavern. I love this tavern with the rooms and everything. It's pretty cool. So obviously the game has some some uh, difficulty scaling, and you can already see that monsters now start with a lot of health, and they do um, their actions to multiple cards, and uh, basically gets harder and harder. So the fourth tavern is where the difficulty picks up quite a lot, I think. Um, so now we have to be uh, on the lookout for, for good moves and not for, for moves that uh, are not so, so good. Uh, the treasure here is to select cards to open three locks and you have to select five cards this one last so we could do this which is pretty good two cards three cards four cards five cards first lock opened got a bunch of monsters down already nice oh no and uh, <laughs> the house rule discarded my treasure hmm. Okay, so let's see. Uh, well, we definitely need the block card for the for the, um, for the bat later on. He's super nasty if he uh, it's not blocked. Oh, there's my <laughs> card again. Now let's count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Oh no, it's it's not possible to get it right now because it's disabled. Uh, okay, then let's do it this way. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And we just discard the, uh, the shop guys. Okay, and this guy got uh, hit by the crossbow. Triggered his revenge and burnt this guy. Uh, treasure chest is shot again. Three strengths is okay. Let's continue like this. We can draft. Let's see if we can some synergies with the spells, but it's not giving me any real synergies. Uh, so this is an ally card I was talking about earlier. Allies actually help you and uh, are friendly. And uh, the cool thing about allies is that allies, as you can see here, tank or take the damage for you when, when they're selected. So if you were to get a hit from an enemy, this guy, if he's selected in the pass, gets basically hit. So you can use them as a meat shield, so to speak. And um, when they're defeated, they would return in the next tavern. So they're only uh, dead for, the, for this current tavern where they die in. So this one, obviously, champion is pretty good with other allies because he makes other allies really strong. But um, obviously don't have any other allies right now. Kind of leaning towards the double attack. It's pretty costly. But maybe we can get a um, improvement to remove the uh, strength cost of the card and then it's super powerful with our uh, strike attacks. Uh, my treasure got discarded again. Let's see. This guy has this card. I don't want to discard right now. This guy has too much health. Um, I think we just go for those two. Okay. Um. Yeah, I think we just go for strength replenish here. Ah, oh, and there my um, charm dress triggered, so we just got a additional tech card, which is pretty good. So, 
my 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 strong attack here got cursed, so and it, it has four already probably from this guy. He increased the strength of this, so this card is now super costly. Uh, don't know if I actually want to use it at this moment here. So this guy's dead. This guy needs to be gone. This guy discards and adds two. So actually, I don't want to discard him for now. Check out this guy. And the shocker will go back into the deck. So I think now the bat should spawn. But we failed the quest to uh, actually summon the turn. Uh, the seven boss before the second shuffle, we're already in the second shuffle. Um, so here's the boss. So now comes block. And we want to block him. And um, if I use this, this damages a lot of enemies and it's pretty good, but it also hurts us a lot. For, for health for the card. Um, Let's just move those out of the way, I think that's fine. Okay. Does, this card is pretty pretty funny, so that's in, in our community that's the most hated card actually, it's the Bard. The Bard, maybe you can't see it right now, but the, the Bard has an aura and you have to like have to select him first, so this Lead led to, to some very hilarious deaths of, of a lot of players because uh, he basically uh, he's not strong himself, but his his ability is, is super annoying. Uh, but luckily he got shocked by this guy, I think, uh, so he cannot uh, force us to to select him first, which means we can just get rid of him here. I'm heading the boss here, replenishing some health, so we're pretty low on health. So we have seven cards left in the deck. I uh, have to see. Two more cards into the bonfire. Um, let's see, we could do this. Do this and then boom, do this. So it didn't doubles the damage. It uh, basically kills the boss for us. But the real attack. It's <coughs> the fourth boss down, very nice. Now we actually uh, we actually would have needed like a health replenish, which would be would have been better than this. But I think I go for health and strength here because we can replenish some strength with this card. Uh, another um, card got added from the charm, which is cool. And again, shit, my <laughs> my poor treasure, he got discarded again. So that's really bad for us. I can't get the treasure back because it's now in the discard pile and we're already in the last shuffle, so... Uh, yeah. This guy has endured and deal damage, so we need to remove him for sure. Oh, they're running super low on us, because they all have burn. Let's try this. Really could use my bonfire card now to replenish some health from strength. Let's see if this is okay, this is okay, this is also good. These guys got shocked by this guy. Um, let's see, we could do... This maybe, replenish some health. Get rid of this guy because he specifically targets my cards with shock. I don't want to shock in my my uh, healing cards. Okay, that's the healing card. Crossbow takes out another one. Um, let's see. Maybe get rid of this guy. 
he's almost dead now. Yeah, no, he's dead from my crossbow. There's the barkeeper. Still, my my health here is uh, it's shocked my my health replenish card, which is not so good. But we could use this guy. We don't have a shield. He has a nice ability um, that the next shield actually heals heals damage. So this guy. This guy discards and he deals two damage. I don't want this and he or oh she, sorry, this is the new female new barkeeper. She will actually hit us as well. So let's try this. Um, we have one more card and after that we can heal. We pay the barkeeper. Good. <clears throat> then we can, I mean, it doesn't matter really, but we can heal here and then just leave. Didn't complete the quest though, I should have looked that up. Ah no, we, we did not complete the quest, right? We did not complete the quest because we didn't uh, summon, we hadn't summoned the uh, boss before the second shuffle. So last uh, tavern reward, let's improve this one. And then um, we could look for the we could look for the removal. Do we have enough? No, it's not enough. Um, okay. Anyways, let's duplicate one more of these because uh, no, there's this this one because they are super strong and they will help us in the last count. Okay, so we can discover one more tavern from the Gnard route. We can go over here to the Frozen Inn. Look at this real quick. Uh, the slime, the slime. The slimes are also pretty funny. Let's do the slimes. I actually like the slime more than the uh, the Soul Eater who discards card, which can be uh, <laughs> pretty nasty as well. Okay, so this is also an interesting treasure. Um, this treasure basically wants us to select the cards in his uh, specific pattern, uh, starting from the top, and then going here, 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 and here. Okay, unlock him right away. This card again, which uh, as we have seen was pretty strong. Um, uh, let's, let's take this again, let's try it again. I mean, it's fun. I mean, it, it always depends a bit on the layout and the cards that you have on the board when it tur in the, in the um, uh, turn it spawns. Mm, but we can try to make this really worthwhile. So, uh, again, now comes the combo of double damage. Strike attacks, which is pretty good. Guys are gone. Um, so here's our treasure. Is there any way to to gain any to get any damage this turn? Not really. This guy does two on this card, but he's shocked, so he won't. So what? The good part is we can just select the treasure and discard it for now. And then it doesn't uh, doesn't matter really. Getting back some strengths here. We can try in the next uh, shuffle. Okay. Um, he has endure. So he's better to be selected and discarded. This guy dies. Okay, first bonfire. Um, 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 let's take health here. Even though we don't have any strengths right now. Okay, that's this treasure again. So now it maybe is the turn for some damage for us. So this will hit us for three, which means three more gold. Six gold for us, which is pretty good. Pretty good. That's my strength card. Do this. Okay. 
Yes. So this guy <clears throat> down here is also a unique card. It's the uh, annoying mosquito. He basically reduces player health by one for each monster on the board. So he would remove four strength of us at the end of the turn and since we don't have any strength right now he would actually damage us for four which is super difficult and uh, dangerous for us. Uh, so but those guys are all dead and then he would only remove one strength from us if I see that correctly. Let's try this out. <coughs> oh, he didn't and he didn't remove strengths because I think he's not counting for himself. Maybe. Maybe that's a bug. Uh, <laughs> I have to actually check that later. Okay, so this guy's gone. Uh, this guy will hit us for two. We don't want that. Yeah, but, but we need to remove this guy and he also has three strengths and this Let's let's do it like this for now. This guy gone. Um, we could. Does this help anyone? Oh no, that's not good. I actually would need to find a way to gain some strengths. We can, uh, you can't see that here because my uh, video is in the way. You can look at your draw pile. And I think my... Uh, my water was already drawn. Okay, let's see. Um, uh, we could do a low low strength turn here. We need four more cards to be removed to get in uh, reshuffle and maybe regain some of our strength. Okay, this is the last draft. Um, we could, we already have this card, we could go for the fireball which is also pretty nice. At both strike and um, uh, regular attack. Okay, oh, this is getting really, 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 uh, really hard now. Uh, uh oh, one health left. <clears throat> we might lose this now. Last tavern. Ah, uh, you know, not yet. Nice. That was pretty lucky that we got a health replenish here. I thought it was almost over. Got another card from the. Uh, Tavern uh, from the um, Charm of Favor. And now is the moment where we actually can do this and this, which is pretty good. So we replenish a bunch of strengths here, and we should have enough uh, tools collected now for the uh, last boss, which is the big slime. And the big slime, uh, like all good slimes, basically splits into two smaller slimes when you attack him. These guys are gone. Ah, the crab is immune to uh, bleed because he's immune to um, physical damage. The mosquito will die. Uh, let's see, we could go here. Basically, it's everyone as well. Okay, this is a totem. This is an obstacle actually. This is no not a humanoid character. This guy um, blocks damage basically for adjacent cards. So you, if you have a attack, physical attack of two, you cannot damage adjacent cards. Um, let's see. That this guy, yeah, basically this guy don't, doesn't die from bleed, so we just discard him, I think. One more hit on the big slime. So next turn, big slime dies. Big slime dies. Could do another low cost turn here. So 
Uh, let's see. So now he dies and he draws two new slimes. The small slimes. And they um, basically... Each of the small slimes have a different uh, mechanic. <coughs> and they basically buff each other. So this is good for us. We just replenish uh, strength here for the last round of the game. We even got another good uh, card from our uh, charm. This one is really uh, doing all the work for us here, I think. So this is cool because this guy doubles damage for thoughts. And that means we can hit this guy here. Power up this guy. And this guy is also dead in this turn, which is pretty good. So that means Slime Boss is defeated. Uh, arguably those two effects of those slimes weren't the, weren't the worst. They are far worse for worse ones uh, and far harder ones actually. So yeah, gotta be lucky here, but oh well. So this is another turn for Powered Up Strike attack. But it also deals a lot of damage to us, six. And I don't think we have any... Do we? Uh, we still have our leech card. Okay. This guy endures. Um, let's see. Could we go maybe around here? Get rid of him? No, we can't. I don't want this guy to stick around because he can hurt us. And in this case, he dies, right? Yeah, let's do this. I'm actually banking on my on my leech card so that we don't die from the barkeeper in the last turn, which would be really uh, annoying. So and your DS3, which is also not good. This guy, this guy on top here, the ogre, get killed. Ten more cards, ten more cards. Oh, 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 this is not good, this is not good. Burning my strength card here. Three, three, okay. Six more cards, six more cards. Okay, this is really good because we can make this free. Five. Five should be enough, I think. That's it. Even though it's pretty close <laughs> health-wise, I think we can make it out without actually playing the barkeeper. Yeah, he deals two damage and increases by two, and then we just go here and here and say goodbye, and that's it. Nice! So, frozen and completed. Five gold, two gold, and treasure also collected. Yeah, and that's a full run! In almost an hour, pretty good. So, um, yeah, that's it. So we, we've completed five of five uh, taverns, killed five bosses, missed war quest, collected 14 gold, and our adventure score total is 14 now. We got a bunch of other scores in this uh, high score list here as well. Um, and then once you've completed the super awesome uh, game completion screen, which always makes me laugh. So let's enjoy that real quick. Nice. Yeah, that's it. All bosses uh, party with you. Uh, obviously the more gold you collect, the more uh, boost everyone gets, but um, I think Everyone gets a big mark and everyone is happy. Right. Okay. Yeah, I think that's it. That's a full run of Cardboard Adventure with the uh, first starting character, the Scoundrel. Again, the Scoundrel is available in the demo, which you can try right now. And um, I'm hoping that, um, we've get the, that we get the game ready for release in uh, the beginning of March. Uh, we will take part in the Steam Next Festival in February should be a cool event for us and um, 
yeah, until then, uh, please follow and uh, wish us the game if you like, and um, that would help us a lot. And um, uh, yeah, you will get updates uh, via Steam or our um, social media channels. And um, I hope that this was a nice demo for you. And um, yeah, I hope to see you in the taverns of Cardcore Adventure soon. Have a good one. Bye bye.